Hi again. Sorry you caught me by surprise back there. I'm Marco Alpert of EMU Systems, and I'm the product manager of the Morpheus Z-Plane Synthesizer, a product we are tremendously excited about here at EMU Systems. I'd like to welcome you to EMU and to the Morpheus Z-Plane Synthesizer video. Over the next 20 minutes, we'll be telling you exactly what makes Morpheus special, and we'll be giving you some tips on how to get the most out of your Morpheus. To begin with, what exactly is Morpheus? Well, we believe Morpheus is the next step beyond sample playback. Proteus has clearly set the standard over the last few years in sample playback in our industry, but it's become clear to us that people want more, more expressivity in their sounds, and more new sounds, sounds that people just haven't been able to make before. So we have looked for ways to create a whole new form of synthesis. We've looked at a lot of different technologies. For instance, one of our early experiments was with analog physical modeling. This is actually an early prototype. Check it out. Actually, not too bad. Now, admittedly, it's only one voice polyphonic, and it only has one preset, but it would only have to sell for $6,000. At any rate, we eventually rejected that in favor of what we call Z-plane synthesis. Now, what is Z-plane synthesis? Z-plane synthesis is a new technology based on an entirely new class of filters. Z-plane synthesis gives us the ability to create entirely new classes of sounds, as well as giving a whole new level of expressivity to conventional acoustic sounds. How does Z-plane synthesis work? Well, to help us explain it, we've got some handy-dandy audio-visual aids. Watch. As you may be aware, traditional synthesizers typically used something called two- or four-pole low-pass filters with resonance. They operated in two planes on one frequency at a time. Morpheus' Z-plane filters, on the other hand, consist of 14 filter poles configured as six parametric EQ sections and a low-pass filter section. What this means is it essentially gives you independent control over seven filters simultaneously. As a result, Z-plane filters are powerful enough to model virtually any resonant characteristics, whether of acoustic instrument bodies or of resonances that don't exist in nature. If this were all Z-plane filters did, they would still be the most powerful filters available on any electronic musical instrument. However, Morpheus's real power comes from its ability to interpolate or morph in real time between any two arbitrary resonant characteristics. The result is the ability to smoothly change or morph between any resonant characteristics in three dimensions. The results are sounds that you've simply never heard before from any other electronic musical instrument and a whole new level of expressivity for traditional acoustic sounds. Of course, Z-plane filters, while the key to Morpheus, are still only a small part of the collection of features that Morpheus offers. Let's take a look at what makes up Morpheus. Morpheus provides 32 voice polyphony for complex sequences or thick layering. Each of these 32 voices have its own 14-pole Z-plane filter, two LFOs, three envelope generators, and two multi-segment function generators to create complex control contours. Morpheus supplies 16-part multi-timbral capability for flexibility and sequencing. It includes eight megabytes of newly sampled sounds, both acoustic sounds and waveforms, internally expandable to 16 megabytes. It also includes dual stereo effects processors and a seriously expanded version of our MIDI patch modulation system to take maximum advantage of Z-plane synthesis expressive capabilities. It includes a new hyper preset mode that allows you to stack or split up to 16 presets with velocity cross switching. And it includes a memory card slot for the storage of presets, hyper presets, and MIDI maps. To help you get the most out of your Morpheus, we're lucky enough today to have the assistance of the Morphmeister himself, Mr. Jerry Basterman. Let's go check it out. Wow, fantastic new sound, isn't it? The Morpheus from EMU. You know that. You bought one. Congratulations, it's a fantastic new device. And I want to show you a little, well, let's just say it. I want to show you some of the finer points of harnessing the new power you've got. You've probably already connected it, plugged the power in, 
connected the outputs, plugged the MIDI in. It is a MIDI sound module. Let's show you the back of this Morpheus because you may not know the intricacies of the separate outputs called sub one and sub two. These four right here. Typically, they can be used as separate outputs to send sounds to specific mixer inputs. You may want to do that. Or they can actually be used as send and return jacks for going to an effects module and coming back. Or, very few people know about this, you can actually use them as additional inputs for sounds. Say you have some sound modules and you don't have enough mixer inputs on your console, you can use these outputs as inputs. There's a concept. Plug the cable in till you hear that click right there. And now you're routing these sounds directly back to the main outputs, so you're actually augmenting your mixer inputs by four more. All right? Very powerful, little known feature of the Morpheus. Anyway, let's get into some of the more complex, sophisticated, and exciting features inside the device. All right, now there are some demo sequences on board the Morpheus to demonstrate the power and diversity of these filters. And I'm going to show you how to get to those. See the MIDI map and hyper buttons? Well, underneath that reads demo. You need to press both of these buttons at the same time and wait. And after a second or so, you see the demo screen, the cursor being immediately under number one. If you want to select any of the others, use your cursor buttons to go to the right or to the left. And when you're done listening, simply hit enter, and you're back to your main screen. Now let's go to the main screen, probably the screen you'll spend most of your time on. It's right here, and it has quite a bit of information on it. The first column is C01. This is the MIDI channel. And you see the cursor flashing underneath the zero. Well, you just use the data encoder to choose the MIDI channel. First off, all Morpheuses are shipped in MIDI Omni mode, which means the Morpheus responds to any and all MIDI channels. However, if you switch it to poly mode, and I'll explain how to do that in the master menu very soon, then the Morpheus responds only to information, say, on channel 12, the displayed channel. Now, if you want to navigate around the screen, let's go back to channel 1. We hit the cursor button. Now you're over into the volume column. It says here, MIDI volume is set to 127. It's all the way turned up. You can turn it all the way down or anywhere in between, down to 0 with the data encoder. Or you can send MIDI controller messages, that's MIDI controller number 7, from your sequencer or from a volume pedal, for example. And you'll see that change reflected right here. Now, if we go over to the pan column. This is MIDI controller number 10. And the Morpheus responds immediately to either volume or pan. It's hardwired. And here it says pan equals P. What does that mean? Pan equals preset, which means in this position, you'll hear whatever this preset is programmed to be in stereo, have more sound on this side than that, or whatever. You can override that at the MIDI channel level simply by moving here to negative 7, which is all the way hard left to any point in between, including 0, which is, in fact, center but mono, and then all the way to plus 7, which is hard right. And if you want to hear the presets the way they're programmed, you put it back to pan equals preset. Now, finally, we get down to where the sounds reside, the presets and hyper presets. I'm going to describe what each of these banks are. First, you see 0, 0, 0, and then a small superscript 0. This means bank 0. And there's 128 presets already in here. These are RAM presets, which means they, they are programmable. And you can save any edits or changes or original presets of your own to any of these locations. So if I keep going up now, you'll see it gets to 127. And now we move to the next bank. Again, 0001. This is the bank of ROM presets, read-only memory. They're factory presets. And you can play them, and you can change them, but you can't store the changes in this bank. There's a lot of sounds on board the Morpheus. So I'm going to go up here to the next bank. The next bank, bank number two, is what's called hyper presets. And I'm going to describe later in the video what these are. But here are. 128 hyper presets, which are programmed at the factory. But in fact, you can change them and save them back to the same locations, because these are RAM locations. OK, now, 0003. 
This means that the data card has been inserted and it has information on it. That's bank number three. And again, here are some RAM presets. Another bank of 128. Maybe you want to back up your RAM banks in the unit onto the card, or perhaps you want to access even more sounds. And then we get to 0004. Again, on the card, this is the last bank, and this allows you on the card to have 128 uh, hyper preset locations, again, that you can write to. So you go all the way up to the top, and basically, if you have the card in, this gives you access to 640 sounds on board at one time, which is pretty amazing. Now, maybe you think that my arm's about to fall off from turning this dial. It, it is a lot of programs to dial through, but EMU has included two little techniques that are going to make it easy for you to get around. First of all, it's acceleration controlled, which means if I go slow, it moves to just a near location. But if I whip it fast, it goes faster, till finally I really zip it, goes all the way back down to the bottom or all the way to the top. So depending on how fast you twirl the knob, you can get further or not so far. Um, a really convenient way to actually move in blocks of banks, that is 128 at a time, is to hold the enter button down. Now watch this. I'm going to select the first bank, preset 8. Then I'm going to hold enter down. Now I can skip through 128 later to the ROM bank, etc., to the hyper presets. So by holding the enter down, you skip through the banks just with one turn of the dial. That makes it a lot easier to navigate between all these presets that are on board. Fantastic. The master menu. The button is right here. Every feature or function in this menu affects the Morpheus as a whole. For example, master tune or transpose, etc. I'm going to show you a few in here that are very powerful, like we spoke before about MIDI mode. Morpheus ships in omni mode. You can switch it to poly mode or to multi mode. And this is where you want to leave the Morpheus if you're going to do some sequencing. Thence, you can use 16 MIDI channels at one time. Very powerful. I usually leave my Morpheus in that mode. Here, program change map. There are four such maps. You select those right there. What is this here for? Well, as we said before, there are up to 640 possible sounds at one time in the Morpheus. And you know, MIDI only has 128 programs in the protocol. So if you want to reach into these various other banks at one time, here's how you would do it. Simply dial down and say that MIDI program change number 8, for example, is going to now become number 124 in the fourth bank, etc. And in this way, you can create a matrix of MIDI program change numbers affecting any of 640 sounds on board the Morpheus. And controllers, this is very important. These are the MIDI controller routings. For example, the defaults are 1, 2, 3, 4. And what that means is MIDI controller number 1, typically mod wheel, becomes, in the Morpheus context, controller A. And similarly, number 2, which is typically breath control, becomes controller B. Number three is left open by the MIDI spec, but you can use that for anything you like. That becomes controller C. And controller number four, which is typically foot control, this becomes controller D. And typically, controllers A and D are used a lot in Morpheus presets. So if you want to access foot control, make sure that your controller, your keyboard, or in your computer, that you're driving MIDI controller number four if you want to hear how that affects your Morpheus presets. OK, send MIDI data. SysX packet delay, a very esoteric function. If any of you, by the way, know already what this means, then you don't need this video. You don't need me. You can go to making music right away. In fact, I'll leave my number at the end of the video. You can call me and tell me what this is. SysX packet delay, a first in the industry. Compare mode, this is important because it defaults on. And when we're in the preset edit menu, I'll show you how powerful this function can be. So that's the master menu. When you want to leave that, you simply hit the master module button again, and you're back to the main screen. All right, well, enough talking for now. I'm a little tired. Let's hear some music, some Morpheus music. Play some of these fascinating presets on board. When you play Morpheus, always explore using mod wheel or foot controller. Remember, Z-plane synthesis relies on the fact 
that you're changing and interpolating or morphing from one filter to another filter. In real time, you're making these changes, and that's what's so dynamic and exciting about the technology. For example, in this program, Piano Vibe, we're sending the piano waveform with no filter, scared, alone, vulnerable, into a whole new realm, a whole new land of a resonant vibraphone uh, filter frame. And this is going to be very exciting when I move the mod wheel. Sounds just like a piano. Till I morph it. Or I can do the same thing with my foot on a foot controller. Incredible. Or, for example, in this next program, uh, which is an acoustic guitar, Velocity is the real-time controller, where I bring in a resonant flange with the control of my fingers. Moving forward, we get to a really exciting program called Fat Sky. And in this program, you can actually hear the poles of each of the filters moving very slowly to create the new sound. We start with a vocal sound. And as I move the mod wheel, incredible new timbres, new spectrums. with the foot controller. All right, now in this next example, we're actually using the Morpheus filters to create a very realistic effect. I think you're all probably familiar. When you play a guitar, when you strum it by the bridge, it's very bright and very, very uh, high frequency prone. And when you play it away from the bridge, it gets deeper and deeper and deeper of a sound. But it's not the simple sound of a low pass filter change. It's actually two completely different sounds. The pick position, uh, according to position on the string, is a completely different resonant filter sound. And in Morpheus, we've developed a filter frame which mimics that, one being close to the bridge, one being in the middle of the string. And I'm going to play that. Um, using first the modulation wheel. And now, if I play with the foot controller, I can do a little bit more with my fingers. Now this next preset is called Mutiny, and it's basically a trumpet waveform being sent through a filter that's been devised to sound exactly like a Harmon mute, like this. Where now the, the modulation wheel will actually remove the effect. Next one called Yao Wahoo. Why is that? Well, it's because a simple sawtooth wave has been sent through vocal formant filters to sound like this. <laughs> Yao Wahoo. <laughs> Makes a great bass sound. <laughs> Wow. Wahoo. And now the yaw synth. Here's where we make the Morpheus take a simple waveform and by applying different vocal formants to it, make it change what it's saying from E to yaw with the mod wheel, such as. <coughs> Yeah. 
All right, next we have woofer. And in, in this program, the mod wheel will actually alter the harmonic content in real time. So you can play a bass line like this. Really rhythmically for you techno guys. There's also a feature in Morpheus called loop offset which allows you to read through the memory in a rhythmical way, like this program, Rant Groove. I'm holding down the C1, and it's looping and looping through a variety of, of samples in, in ROM, and I can play over that. Fantastic. You can only do some things here at EMU, actually. Okay, well, while there's a lot of sounds resonant in the Morpheus, chances are you want to edit or customize or program your own sound. And here's where you do that, right in this preset edit menu, where there are many, many features and functions where you can assign sounds and shape them and pan them and transpose them. Lots of editing capability. I'm going to go right up to the filter type window where you actually select the filter you're going to use to process the waveform. And this is a sound that's called brass swell. So it has the sin wow filter on it. And you can see by cursoring down and simply choosing another, I now have a very highly resonant flange sound that's also quite usable. The old sound. The new sound. So a really simple way to change sounds is simply switching filters. Cursor back up and see what else we have, all the different filter functions. We get up to these two, the note on control and the real time control. Together, these comprise what's called the MIDI patch system. This is what EMU calls its matrix of modulation. And it's quite analogous to uh, synthesizer days, where you would take a patch chord and come out of one module and feed that output into the input of another module. Similarly, you do the same thing here, where you take a controller, whether it's key velocity or a modulation wheel or foot controller, and you route it to a destination. And maybe that's volume, maybe that's morphing, maybe that's panning. I'm going to show you an example in this next program here. Here's a clavinet type sound. It's kind of static, it's very biting, but it's a little bit just sits there. And to show you the power of a uh, MIDI patch, I'm going to go into that, it just sits there. And to show you the power of a uh, MIDI patch, I'm going to go into that preset edit button right there, and I'm going to send the modulation wheel, which is control A, I'm going to send that to morph, so we can control the switching of these filter frames. There it is, morph. Like that, you could control it with velocity or foot pedal, anything. 20 such chords comprise the MIDI patch system. So that's really powerful. And again, that's exactly what the Morpheus is all about, real-time control, making the sounds change and be dynamic. Function generator is a possible source in the MIDI, mat in the MIDI patch uh, matrix. A function generator is basically an eight-segment rate and level envelope generator with some unique abilities. For example, each function generator segment can have its own shape. Now there's over 60 shapes to choose from, including linear, positive, and negative exponential, random, or even chaos. The Morpheus function generators also allow conditional jumps. And what this means is you can program a function generator to jump directly to a segment based on a specified value. This function generator, for example, jumps directly from segment 1 to segment 4 if the velocity of the note is less than 84. If it's greater than 84, all segments will be played. This produces different attack 
characteristics depending on performance articulation. The function generators can also be programmed to loop indefinitely, producing arbitrarily complex LFO functions, as in this next preset where a looping function generator is routed to pitch. So for this, I'm going to choose this flute duo, which without any function generation at all, is a normal flute sound. If I go to that real-time control menu and I select function generator number one to modulate, let's say, the pitch of the first layer, which is primary layer is up to here, I just hit the note and it's looping indefinitely on this motif. like so. Now, whenever you've done a lot of programming work, developing, for example, this function generator, which modulates the pitch, and you'd like to bring that specific function into another program, that's where you can use this copy button. This copy menu allows you to copy anything to anything. And this saves a lot of time if there's uh, envelopes, for example, or effects or LFO shapes, or anything that's programmed, let's say, within the factory programs that are included with the machine that you like, and you'd like to bring them into your own sound, that's where copy comes in really handy. I just simply hit the button and look at all the things you can copy. Presets, that's kind of obvious. Copy a layer from one to the other. Or filter, instead of just swapping them within a, a program, you can actually swap them between um, programs now. Copy the LFO, or here, the function generator. And there's two per preset, so you can actually copy one to the other, send it to a new place. Copy the aux envelope, uh, or any of the MIDI patch functions here, note on or real time. You can copy hyper presets, zones, free run function generators, MIDI maps, channels, effects. Look at this, even the program change maps, you can copy between each other. Or, of course, copy the bank. And this is really good for backup. Look at this. The hyper is on the card now. I'm at somebody else's house with a Morpheus. I want to copy it into their RAM. Or, for example, I want to send the presets I have in RAM onto my card. This is where you do it, right here. OK, and I've just done it. There you are, a very handy feature. Hyper presets, hyper presets. You've heard about them the whole video. Now I'm going to tell you what they are. Hyper presets are actually a way of taking any of the programs or presets that are on the Morpheus and layering them or stacking them or piling up up to 16 of them in any way you see fit. I'm going to show you an example of some here. This is a hyper preset called Mood Texture. And to access a, a little inside look, hit the hyper button. That's where you get to name it. Or in here is where you get to assign presets to the zones. And zones could be one note on the keyboard. You get to specify the range, or full range, or half. So here we have the flute morph on zone one. Zone two has the organ bass. And zone three has a string swell. And as you see, we can go up to 16 of those. So you can really pile it on thick. Now all of those, I'm going to skip a little, around a little. Zone one is only from A sharp two up to G8. Zone 2 is pretty much in the bass up to A2. And the other one, zone 3, is full range. So let's play this a little bit before I go over some of the other parts of the menu. Basically, three presets simply stacked and arranged together. And here I can go in and I can say that zone one, two, or three, see zone three is on volume 99. I can pan them as well in this setting. And a very handy thing up here is the transposition. So if you have, for example, drum presets, and you want to play the drums with your right hand, but in the preset, the drums you want to play are way down here, you can transpose up up to three octaves and play a kick and a snare with your right hand, and then maybe a bass sound here and a pad here, whatever you like. So you can transpose and slip things around, retune them, and arrange them. And as you already know, there's 128 RAM locations for hyper presets. So you can go mad. We include 128 in the Morpheus, as well as you can put more on the card. That's what a hyper preset is. All right, 
right, we finally made it to the music making portion of our show. Thank God. And I think we've already covered part of it when we talked about the main screen, the multi timbre setup where you choose a channel, volume, pan position, and sound. That's all pretty straightforward, but the Morpheus takes this one step further with the concept of the MIDI map. You enter the MIDI map domain right here with this button. A MIDI map is basically a, a software setup where you get to store many settings, like a name. I've named this Ambient Dream, which is the piece I'm currently working on. And here I get to either assign a preset or a hyper preset to any of 16 MIDI channels. And you choose the channels over on this side of the screen. See all those set up right there. So that now when I start my sequence and I have this MIDI map selected, all the MIDI channels fire the right sounds. Here's my volume for each channel. Again, pan position. And also, the dual stereo effects processors live in the MIDI maps. So, for example, on channel one, I want the mix outputs to go to FX A bus. And similarly, channel two, three, four. I think in this piece, I've sent everything but the bass and the kick to the reverb. OK, so let's get back here and dial up the bank select. All of these MIDI channels are going to choose bank select number one, which is the ROM factory presets. Program change map is off. And here, I'm playing a basic drum sound. I have no verb or anything. But here's where I would choose the effect that goes with effects A bus. So if I turn on the reverb, the room, immediately I get some. And I can cursor down to the bottom line and easily make it a longer reverb or a shorter reverb, or go back up to the top and hit warm room. Many different types of reverb algorithms. Small room one, I won't play every one for you. There's many here. There's halls, chambers, plates, early reflections. And each of these has a somewhat different feature on the bottom or function to change and control. Shimmer. Also, you have stereo flange, phaser, stereo chorus, a delay, a cross delay that ping pongs between channels, an echo. That's what's in FX A bus. In FX B, you can select fuzz, like a distortion algorithm, fuzz light, stereo flange, phasing, stereo chorus, and the delays. Again, here we even have ring modulation. Okay? But for this piece, I'm going to leave FXB off and simply choose one of my favorites, the warm room, and maybe just cursor down to decay time and lengthen that a little bit. Okay, That's how you set up effects in the MIDI map. And when you get everything the way you like it, I can decide now what's the mix for that bus to be. Here I have 16% of the signal going through the reverb process. 50% would be much, much wetter. And just a little bit, 10%, 12%. Typically, I use about 16 for a piece like this. And here's where you'd set the mix for B, but that's not on at this point. And here, of course, at the top of the menu, as it was in the top of the preset edit menu, where you save the information. So once I set everything up and I name it, I want to save it somewhere. So I cursor down, and let's go see what's in the, OK. MIDI map 00, these are the ones that come with the Morpheus, and they're basic, just simple effects uh, setups like this. But since I have the card in, I get to number 15, and when I go here, number 16 is on the card, and you can tell that from the asterisk that's there. So let's save it to that ambient dream. I hit Enter, saving MIDI map, bippity bop, snippity snap, it's done. That's what a MIDI map is. All right, so if you want, let's check out some of the music I've been doing with the Morpheus. uses almost all the MIDI channels, and pretty much I chose presets from the first 10 or 15 in the factory uh, set. A lot of those I've played already, especially the one that morphs from piano to vibe. That's what this piece features. So let's start it and check it out a little bit. Yeah, so for example, right here, the volume of this first program on channel one is fading in. I think that's also true, yeah, on this one, channel four, the strings to bells one. Check out that preset, ball heavy. That's intense. So anything you do in terms of panning or volume, that's all going to be reflected on this screen. You can definitely check it out. <laughs> 